ready to TSOP flash your Xbox version 1.2 to 1.5 motherboard? I'll show you all the steps you need to take coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! The points you have to bridge on the motherboard are kind of small and there's some software work to be done, but it's totally doable even by the average home modder. But only do this for Xbox versions 1.2 through 1.5 motherboards. And only use this specific tutorial for Hynix, Hyundai, and ST brand chips. Hi, my name is Blank. I'm going to show you how to TSOP flash your original Xbox with a version 1.2 to 1.5 motherboard. But before I do that, let me at least explain to you why you would want to do this and what the heck a TSOP even is. TSOP is just an acronym for Thin Small Outline Package. In today's terms, that's just a fancy way of saying flash memory. The Xbox uses a TSOP for what's called an electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, or an EEPROM. You can erase data from it and write new data back to it. It's not permanently burned. It can be written to over and over, kind of like today's modern flash memory can. However, on the original Xbox motherboard, the circuits that allow that chip to be erased and rewritten are disabled at the factory. So for you to be able to reprogram your TSOP, you just have to re-enable the circuits that make that possible. Before you can do a TSOP flash, the Xbox has to be soft modded. So if you haven't soft modded your Xbox yet, I'm going to put a link here in the video to show you how to soft mod your Xbox using the Rocky 5 soft mod technique. It's the best, most modern way to get it done. To open up your Xbox to start the TSOP process, you have to take six long T20 screws out of the bottom of the Xbox. Two of them are underneath labels and four of them are underneath the rubber feet. I've already removed the rubber feet here. Just use the T20 Torx driver and take out those six long screws. With the six screws removed, flip the console back over and you'll be able to remove the lid. If the lid fights with you, don't rip it off the top of the console. Just check and make sure the tension is released, especially from the sides, and the lid should come off freely. Great. Now you've got access to the DVD drive on the left and the hard drive on the right. There are three T10 screws that need to come out. One is underneath the ribbon cable right there. Then there's one here and also one here. So you'll need that T10 driver to take them out. Then you can lift the DVD drive up. And there are two clips in the back that you might have to kind of press in with your fingers inward from the sides. Then the DVD drive will flip out. With the hard drive, the easiest way to get this moving is just take that power cable, the Molex cable, and pull it away. And then you can flip the hard drive right out. Find this NVIDIA chip and the LPC header on the left. It'll help give you your bearing. The TSOP chip is located right here. Read the label to find out which version of chip you have. All the points you need to access are on the top of the motherboard. Start with R7D10. I've marked it here with this big green arrow to kind of indicate where it's at. What you want to do is bridge the two dots directly underneath the green arrow. These points look very large on video, but they're actually quite small. Somewhere between about a 32nd of an inch and a 24th of an inch. So that makes them about the equivalent of one millimeter 
They're very small. Be very precise with your work. In this tutorial, I'm using conductive paint and I recommend that you do the same. Here's why. These solder points are fragile and excessive heat applied to them can lift them up and permanently damage them, which is going to make this process much more difficult and could permanently destroy the Xbox motherboard. So I'm going to use conductive paint in this example. First things first, get some isopropyl alcohol, preferably 99%, and a Q-tip and clean the area thoroughly before you apply the conductive paint. The cleaner the area, the better the adhesion for the paint. Apply the conductive paint to the two points. Now here's the deal, you're probably going to ask me, dude, what are you, some kind of diabetic heroin addict or something? Why are you using a syringe to do this? Here's the deal. My original plan was to put the conductive paint in the syringe and apply it with super fine precision. But yeah, the conductive paint didn't actually suck up into the syringe. So what I ended up doing instead was applying the conductive paint with the needle of the syringe because it's super small and also flexible. So it made it very simple to apply the paint using this very fine instrument. And let me take a moment to give credit where credit's due. My wife actually volunteered to come in and do the painting on the motherboard while I did the camera work. She did an amazing job. I might have just found me an Xbox modding buddy. I couldn't be happier. The next point to bridge together is going to be R7D1 and R7D2. Make sure you clean the area with a Q-tip and some Misopro. Here's the point that you have to bridge together. It connects R7D1 and R7D2 together. So bridge them together with the conductive paint. Make sure you get the two dots at the top of the number two and not the bottom. They're very close together. So again, grab the conductive paint and your tool of choice, in this case the diabetic heroin addict syringe, and bridge the points together. And once again, my wife does some great work here. The syringes are actually something she uses at work to apply adhesive to acrylics. That's why we had them readily available, and that just turned out that the tips worked out great to apply the conductive paint. Just make sure to do any cleanup work that you need to do around the surrounding points before moving forward. Then put the DVD drive and hard drive back in your Xbox. If you are in any way unclear about which flash chip you have, you need to make sure you check it first. And I'm going to link a file below called the Xbox BIOS Checker. So just FTP it over to your Xbox or put it on a DVD, whichever way you prefer to run your software. I have a tutorial on how to FTP things over and I'll link it here so you'll have it. But go to File Explorer and go to where you have the BIOS Checker folder. Look for default.xbe. That's always going to be the executable for Xbox. Default.xbe. So run that. And here's what you'll get. You'll get something like this. It may be different on your system. It probably will be. But here's what's on mine right now. It's an ST chip. You can see it right in the top description. So good to go for this. If you have Winbond or Sharp, there are other procedures to follow. This tutorial isn't for that. If you've already looked at your Xbox and identified Hynix, Hyundai, or ST as your chip, this is probably redundant. But here's the deal. Better safe than sorry. Also, this will tell you whether or not you've bridged those points correctly because if you can't see all this kind of information, you haven't bridged them correctly. You'll need to go back and check your work carefully before proceeding forward. If you can see this much detail, it's reading the TSOP and you're good to proceed. Put in the hexen disk and let it boot up to the main menu. This is a good deal because it tells you straight up in the right corner which Xbox version you have. If you're unclear about which version you have, Hexen is going to tell you first cracker right out of the barrel. So load it up before you proceed forward and just make sure you have version 1.2 through 1.5 here. So in the menus, go down to TSOP flashed chipped Xbox tools and press A. Then come down to 3.2. Modchip TSOP flash, not Winbond. 
Remember, we're not doing Sharp or Wind Bond here, just Hynix, Hyundai, and ST. You'll see the warning messages. Read them over and then press A for yes. It'll start moving some files around. Just let it do its thing. You'll be presented with some choices here for what you're going to flash into your Xbox. I would recommend for every version, just go ahead and put in flash 256K BIOS version 1.0 to 1.5. In the scope of this for 1.2 to 1.5, you have to put in 256K. So at this point, go down and install EVOX. It really is the best solution for most users. So install EVOX down here and press A. So you want the EVO M8. I put plus F and G because I put in two terabyte drives. But if you're using one terabyte or less, you can use just F. And press A. You'll be presented with the opportunity right now to flash. So this is kind of the point of no return, but you're gonna be fine. Press Y to flash the BIOS. And here's what you're gonna get. First, it will erase. And then it will install and flash the new BIOS. If you see a message here that says flash not writable instead of press Y, it means the TSOP points on the motherboard aren't bridged correctly. Go back and double check your work before proceeding. It'll power off when done, so power back on your Xbox. Notice it says EVOX in the top left corner? Congratulations! You've TSOP flashed your Xbox successfully. EVOX is now installed as your BIOS on your Xbox. Now you can move forward with more customizations of your liking, including installing new hard drives without having to lock and unlock them any longer. There are so many great benefits to doing a TSOP flash of your Xbox. You'll like this method. It doesn't expose the Xbox sensitive points to the heat from the soldering iron, which can lift up those pads and potentially damage the Xbox. It's also easy to clean up if you make a mistake. Just clean it with some Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol and repaint the area. It really is a very effective way to go about this, a safe way to go about it, and I would recommend this for doing the TSOP flash on your own Xbox. It works very effectively and adds value to your Xbox by giving you the flexibility to modify it in the way that you see fit. Don't forget to put the lid back on there unless you're planning to do some more mods. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.